go. What's going on, YouTube? So for everybody who is watching this replay, you may want to forward it a couple seconds, maybe a minute once everybody's starting to join. If you are new to the channel and you're just seeing this, like, what the heck is this? Every single Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live for 30 minutes with a millionaire. Oftentimes, it's usually longer than 30 minutes, but the show is called 30 Minutes with a Millionaire, and this is our time um, as a YouTube creator, as a creator, as a, spe a speaker, an author, a course creator, um, a family man. Just This is my, uh, my time to be able to come live and kick it with you guys and get some feedback on everything about the channel and the videos and answer your guys' questions and kick it with you guys. So as always, I'm always going to talk about this until I'm blue in the face. And as long as I'm on YouTube, guys, come prepared. Um, a prepared man is better than any prepared plan. And when it comes to questions, you're literally one question away from getting past where it is that you are stuck, getting to that next level, leveling up, overcoming where you are, um, literally getting to the next level. You could be one question away. So every single week, show up to these and focus on becoming better um, question askers, right? Start writing things down. Start journaling during the week when you're doing things what was hard? What was tough? What was scary? What were you struggling with? What didn't you understand? And then micro compress that into one specific, very targeted, methodical question. That way you can come and ask it. Hopefully I can answer it and you can get past it and you can get to the next level. So now, now it looks like we have some people live. Everybody's joining. So if you're new to this, the way it works, guys, is it's our time to kick it together. I'm here to serve you, to help you get to the next level. So go ahead and drop any question that you have around Amazon, branding, advertising, building a business, um, pretty much anything from any of the videos that you see here on the channel. In any way that I can help you, I'm here to serve you guys. So the only dumb question is one that does not get asked. So any questions that you guys have down below, um, go ahead and drop them down below and let's get started. Also, if you're new to the channel um, and you're new to my world, welcome. I appreciate the support. And if you guys are not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. Click the notification bell because every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, guys, we're dropping new content and I'm coming live to serve you guys, answer questions, and help you guys get to the next level. So what's going on, everybody? Oh, and if you guys can hear me and see me all right, um, go ahead and smash that like button. Awesome. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year to all of you guys, too. I know, depending on where you are in the world, it may already be the New Year. So if you're in the future, um, Happy New Year. Hopefully 2022 is better than 2021. Hopefully 2022 is going to be the best year yet. Uh, let's see. Um, what do you think about Amazon GL? Uh, I'm not too familiar what, with Amazon GL. Can you express a little bit about what Amazon GL is? What's going on, everybody? And let me know if you've been on one of these before down below, say I've been on one and let me know your thoughts. And if you're new, say I'm new. That way I know if you're new too. I think it'd be cool to see like who's coming back and who's new um, just to see. But again, guys, go ahead and drop any questions that you have down below um, and let's see how we can help you. What are some good websites to find a product? Find a product? Um, when it comes for to a physical product to sell like these, which is cool because we just wrapped up uh, a few more episodes of Seven Figure Product, um, with, which is a series, right? And I've got all these products on my desk. Um, so we have one episode that we just released. You should check it out. The name of the video and the name of the series is Seven Figure Products, where I literally break down how do you find seven figure products, six figure products, where do you go to find them to sell on Amazon? What do they look like? What is the branding? What is the marketing? What is the packaging? How much are they making? How do you identify how much you're making? We talk about that all on the channel, but when it comes to website, it's more of a software, not a website. What we do is we find everyday products like the few that I just showed you um, that solve problems that people need that um, in the marketplace and in the real world that are on Amazon. And we use softwares like Jungle Scout to go through and find these products that have high demand, low competition, that products that meet our criteria for products that we want to sell, that we can afford to sell, that meet our risk tolerance, and most importantly, our desired profit margin. 
Um, so if we can pin that down below, anybody who's on the team, discount on junglescout.com is going to get you guys up to 30% discount on Jungle Scout. That's the software that we use to navigate through Amazon, uh, Amazon's catalog and all of their products to find products. You know, there's literally almost a quarter billion different products on Amazon. So it's almost impossible just to go through Amazon and randomly find a product. You have to have some type of tool to navigate towards through these and uh, to identify what the metrics are for these products. So discount on Jungle Scout is an amazing resource. That's one that I've personally used um, for the last half a decade. Um, how much is the course and does the course come with Zoom calls? Um, Andre, so we've got tons of different, I guess, programs, curriculum, courses, consulting, mentorship, um, business investments like Done For You Solutions. We have tons of stuff at our company, AMZ Together. Um, AMZ Formula is the curriculum. So if you're looking just for a program, but it looks like you're looking for like program and consulting or coaching or courses, AMZ Formula Max um, has the AMZ Formula, which is our program, and then it has weekly coaching with different coaches. So we have a PPC and advertising coach. We have an advanced strategy coach. We have a general question and beginner coach, right? Um, we have all these different coaches. When it comes to um, coaching with me, we have my inner circle, which is a step up from Max. So we have Max, which gets you access to the, the different coaches. And then we have the inner circle, which gets you access to not only all of the coaches, but a call with me every single month as well. So if you're interested in those things, um, the best thing to do is to schedule a call with my team and see what works best for you. There's no website where you just go and buy it. Um, the AMZ formula is just the AMZ formula. The AMZ formula max is the AMZ formula max.com. And for inner circle or for done for you, that's something you have to do through our team. So in order to schedule a call, you can schedule a call. My team will drop a link down below. Uh, viral launch is good. I personally don't have experience with viral launch, but I know Casey, he's from Indianapolis, which is one of the founders, the lead developers that worked on the projects. Um, he's from Indianapolis, which is not far from where I used to live in Indiana. So really good guy, really smart guy. I personally haven't used the software, but they all pretty much do the same thing, right? So I can't talk bad about it. I just know jungle scout. I know it's simple. I know it's the oldest software. So it has like the most data. Um, so that's like my personal opinion. And then Eileen or E, whoever's on here, just drop these links for like the programs and to schedule a call just for anybody. Cause I really don't want to hit too much on it, but in case they need those resources, I have been binge, watch, binge watching your videos from 2017, taking notes. And I see you say you should have three to five K to start. I have five K across PayPal credit and two credit cards. Is that good? Uh, yeah, 5K USD is good. 3 to 5K is good. The more resources you have access to, um, honestly and transparently, the better. But I teach you on the channel and in the AMZ formula how to identify what your freedom formula is, which is how much you can afford for a product and how much that product can make before you even spend any money. So I show you how to identify that, how to put those filters into the software, and how to go do the research to find those products. What, uh, let me see, what, did I skip? There are a few products I would like to purchase from a supplier in Alibaba, but the cost of shipping is almost as much of the product and therefore only left with 20% instead of 30%. So 20% would be the bare minimum. I really like 25 to 30%. My sweet spot is 30 to 33% when it comes to profit margin. So you just have to think about ways, like how can you increase the profit margin? Are there ways you can increase the profit margin? Can you increase the price? Can you increase the value and increase the price? Can you get it to 25 or 30%? Um, if not, with 20% profit margin, five products to double your money. With 30 to 33%, every three products you sell, you double your money as well, right? So you just have to think about how much it costs, so on and so forth. Shipping is very expensive, but you have to think about it. If you were to manufacture these products in the US, nine times out of 10, even though the shipping is significantly, considerably less expensive, the cost of manufacturing is going to be more than the cost of manufacturing plus shipping and then some when it comes to sourcing overseas. So when you're getting started, like I know it's crazy, like, okay, if it costs a thousand to source a product, it may cost a thousand to ship it. However, you have to understand that 
how it's getting made, where it's at on the other side of the world. Like it's a 30 day boat ride over here, or it's a three day plane ride over here. Right. It's not like a trip from Chicago to Florida. That's two hours. Like it's literally a voyage on a ship or a several day flight on an airplane to get products there to here. Right. So um, that's just the cost of doing business, but I wouldn't focus on that you can validate shipping costs by finding out who is the freight forwarder or who is the logistics company. And if they say it's UPS or DHL, you can go on their platform and fill out the shipping information, like um, where it's going from where to where, right? And then um, um, the kilogram, like the cubic volume, the weight, all of the different stuff it asks for. You can put it in there and actually see what they're going to charge to see if they're charging you transparently what it costs. Um, you can also do your own due diligence. You can go with a freight forwarder like um, Flexport, or you can go with a broker like Freightos and have them shop around. So there's a few different ways if you're skeptical about the price, things that you can do to validate the actual pricing. But shipping is very expensive. Um, let's scroll up. I think some questions. Uh, yeah, scr uh, scroll down, scroll down. It's the PPC question. Leave that one at the top. Scroll down. What's your Amazon PPC strategy? And when launching a product, what's your test budget per day? And do you focus on broad or exact keywords? So that's one, two, three. So you want the entire like eighth module of my course as a question. So that's like four questions and like a four and a half hour answer. Um, so <laughs> my PPC strategy is simple, um, I guess, to make this four hour answer like a two minute answer. Um, the whole purpose of PPC when you're launching your product is two things. You have a discovery campaign, which is discovering new additional keywords that can make you money and that can that you can rank for to increase rank, which is the end result of making you more money. So you have that campaign and then you have campaigns off of keywords that you've already done um, research on that you already know people are typing in when they want to buy your product. When you're doing this, um, you want to run the auto, you want to run the search campaign that's finding you new keywords, and then you want to split those keywords up. So take them and duplicate them through broad phrase exact, and you want to do them at small budgets. And, you know, $10, $20 a day, depending on the keyword volume, the com competition on the, the product, um, how many sales your sellers are getting, the other sellers are getting per month. There's tons of different variables, but when you're doing that, you want to start out low, because nobody knows what keyword will perform better. Sometimes a keyword will perform good on broad and exact and not phrase. Sometimes on phrase and broad and not exact. There's no rhyme or reason. So you want to run all three. And as long as your ACOS percentage or average cost of sale percentage is that break even, a slight deficit or positive, you want to continue to optimize that. When it's like exact is profitable, broad is profitable, phrase is like negative 40%, you want to kill that. And when I mean kill it, don't delete it because you want to make sure that you have track of it. So what I do is put it at like one penny or five cents, whatever the bare minimum is, so it won't spend, but I have access to all of that data. So um, hopefully that helps, but that's a super detailed question. We talk about that a lot inside of my program, and we even have a PPC coach that breaks this stuff down um, on weekly calls. Uh, good question though, man. Um, this is the first time I've been on this platform, but I've attended some of your other classes. Awesome. I appreciate it. What is the best way to do bookkeeping with Amazon? So Amazon will actually, actually issue you a 1099 K I believe it is. So you just get that and then you can give it to your accountant or you can just put it into your QuickBooks or you can just file it. If you follow your taxes, whatever you do, it's pretty simple. You don't have to do a bunch of different um, crazy stuff, right? It's not that complex. You have money, like you have the money that you're spending on advertising. You have the money that is going to fees and you have the sales coming in, right? Outside of that, you have your cost of goods, cost of any outside marketing, and then your cost of goods shipped or your logistics costs, right? Um, what I do is I have a separate bank account. I have a separate credit card, separate debit card, and that's all linked with Amazon. So I can track all the expenses and then you can export reports from credit card, debit card, bank account, and then Amazon gives you a 1099. I give that to my accountant. If you don't have an accountant and you do it yourself, that's 
pardon me, that's just four pieces of uh, paperwork that have all your financials, right? So it's not that crazy. It's not that complex. Uh, we got to scroll up on questions. Um, what do you think about Amazon Global Logistics? So, I mean, it, it, it defend, like I definitely recommend, um, first and foremost, when you're getting started, you get started with the U.S. marketplace. The U.S. marketplace is the largest, right? It's the easiest to get started with. It's the largest, regardless of what country you live in. Um, now, there's a few countries where you can't sell on Amazon, if, then you definitely start in the U.S., but if you live in a country where you can sell on Amazon and there is a marketplace, with the exception of Canada, Mexico, or the United Kingdom, I highly suggest that you always start in the U.S. And usually when we're consulting clients that live in one of those three countries, we still recommend that they start in the U.S. because it has the largest search volume, it's the largest marketplace, um, and it's, it's just easier to rank and scale your products. Once we hit um, a threshold for our product and it's making our target um, numbers. There's a few things that we have to ask ourselves when it comes to scaling the business, scaling the brand. Do we want to do so through vertical integration or do we want to go do so through geographic expansion? So when you look at vertical integration, vertical integration would be launching other semantically relevant products, other products underneath our portfolio or our umbrella. That way we can sell more products and scale that way. That's vertical integration, maybe accessories, different products, parent products, so on and so forth, complementary products. Or is this product crushing it and is it more advantageous to eliminate finding another product and then just expanding um, internationally? And if so, usually we go in ascending to descending order. We do a little bit of geographic and demographic research based off of what the product is. And if... Usually I can tell you right now it's United Kingdom and then Canada and that geographical chronological order for like search volume and size of marketplace. But the size of the marketplace may not always be the best for your demographics and your geographics. So with that being said, like for instance, like if you're selling maple syrup, it's just a quick example. Even though UK is bigger than Canada, we would sell in Canada because Canadians like maple syrup, right? It's that may be a bad example, but hopefully you understand where I'm coming from before we just expand and just go slap in all these different countries. Because I made this mistake. When I was expanding first years ago, we were crushing it. And then I couldn't spend more on PPC. And I was running influencers and I was running Google ads. And I, I had an online store and we were crushing it. And then we started to expand globally. And instead of doing one country at a time, I expanded into like eight countries, right? I was in all of Europe. I was in the United Kingdom. I was in Canada. I was in France. I was in Germany. I was in Italy. And I couldn't focus on each and every country. And we had stuff getting locked up. Customs are different. There's just, there's a, a whole lot of different things that you have to focus on when you're scaling internationally. So when you want to scale, when you're thinking about international, I always want to ask like, why do we want to scale internationally? Is it because the geographics and the demographics point to these different areas in the world for prime clients, or is it because we want to make more money? And if it's we want to make more money, often we will explore vertical integration versus geographic expansion. So that's what we do with our clients. That's what I've done personally. I've learned that the hard way. Um, that's what we do ourselves as well. Oftentimes, geographic expansion isn't the way to go. Um, I made that mistake. Like I remember when I was crushing it, I wanted to be in every Walmart. I wanted to be in Walgreens. I wanted to be in 15 countries and that wasn't the best move. And I just wasted a lot of time and got distracted trying to do all these different things to where we could just focus on this one product. Like on my YouTube channel, um, where's that other product that was crushed? This was 1.3, right? Yeah. So on my YouTube channel, we have a series called the seven figure product series. We just recorded this video, which will be out in a couple weeks. But if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel and watch the series, Seven Pro Figure Product Series. Anyway, this product, um, this is a um, portable garment steamer. I just did a case study on this and I broke it down. Who is the company? Um, what is the product doing? All of the revenue. That product is making $1.4 million gross per month. They're making around $350,000 profit per month with this one product like 300 G's profit with this one product every single month. Um, and they're not in a bunch of countries, right? They don't have a bunch of different SKUs. So sometimes finding that one product and really going in on it and becoming a category king or queen or be, becoming a whale or a titan in that industry, really diving down and focusing on 
you know, marketing and then vertical integration is better than going into geographic expansion? So that was a really good question. I don't think we've talked about that yet. That was awesome. Um, best way to use Jungle Scout for product research. Um, man, to be honest, dude, I know this answer sucks, but I've got hours of free videos here on the YouTube channel that show you like you're looking over my shoulder and I'm showing you how to um, navigate through Jungle Scout. I also just released a brand new book for my birthday this, this month in December. It's called One Product Away. Um, that whole book is on how to find a product, what makes a good product, and my whole philosophy about finding products and building this business out to a seven-figure business. I think it's 20 bucks, right? 25 bucks or something. Um, the link to that is www.one, the number one, productawaybook.com. www.oneproductawaybook.com. I'm sure someone from my team will link it or drop it down below. Um, but check that out. Also, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, we break down a ton of product research inside of the book. There's tons of product research videos on the channel. And then, of course, like if you really want in-depth, like all of the strategies I know, in-depth looking over my shoulder, there's the AMZ Formula and all of my programs. Um, AMZ Formula Max and the Inner Circle, you have access to all of the curriculum in AMZ Formula. And then you actually have coaches. So we have a product research coach that will do live product research and break down uh, products and answer your questions on products. Um, all of our clients and members also get products reviewed, so on and so forth. So it just depends what you're looking for. But I highly suggest that you don't figure this out the way I did on my own. Like there's only two ways, guys. And I know this sounds super biased and like super like guru talk, but I, this is I, I am speaking from experience. There's only two ways that you can learn anything in this planet, not just how to sell on Amazon. You can learn through your experience, which I promise you every single time will cost you more money and more time. And you can learn through the experience of someone else who's already wasted all the time and all the money and who can tell you exactly what to do. That's why I have a personal trainer. Um, that's why I have consultants myself. That's why I have advisors. That's why I'm in masterminds. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents on that. I feel stuck. I have my seller's account set up uh, even on Shopify, but I'm stuck on sourcing, logistics, pricing, etc. Yeah, so don't focus on Shopify and Amazon. Pick one, get laser focused. I suggest Amazon. Um, and then when it comes to sourcing, logistics, pricing, etc., don't worry about all these things because what's going to happen is you're going to fall victim to analysis paralysis. All you need to do is focus on your one product, right? Our slogan is your one product away, not your mastering the business away, right? So all you have to do is first take a deep breath. Second of all, get some type of education. If it's free stuff on YouTube, listen, guys, we have more free content on YouTube than any other Amazon person on planet Earth, right? Right? That's a fact. That's not me bragging. It's just factual. So if you want to learn how to find a product and you don't have access to resources, become resourceful. Use the free resources I put out there for you. If you have resources, if you have capital, invest in a program. Invest in consulting where you won't become overwhelmed because we'll help you. We'll answer all your questions. We'll hold your hand. We'll show you exactly what to do. And for some of you, we do it all for you if you're in my AMZ DFY program. However, don't like fall victim to analysis paralysis, looking at all these things. All you have to do is focus on this product. Identify what is product research, how does product research work, and become obsessed with finding this one product. Your obsessions become your possessions. So all you should be doing is looking for this one product, um, getting better at product research, and then go in order. Like when you find the product, figure out, okay, how do I go find a supplier? When you find the supplier, figure out how do I negotiate? How do I ship? And take it one step by step. Write all the steps down. Put little check marks next to them and take it one step at a time. Because when you think about branding and packaging and logistics and infrastructures and logistics and trademarks, and when you think about all of this stuff, it's like, oh my God, this is all this stuff. I don't want to do this stuff. I don't know where to start. Um, that's just a human feeling, right? It's a human emotion and we all have it. So just focus on one thing. Matter of fact, that's an amazing book, The One Thing by Gary Keller. And it talks about the importance in making things simple and focusing on one thing that can get you exponential results. Right now, if you're focusing on 20 different things, you're not starting because you're overwhelmed. However, if you were to focus on this one thing, which is product research, you would learn product research and you would get exponential results or you would get exponential momentum in where you are uh, in the future versus where you are now, if that makes sense. 
One supplier asked if I wanted DDP shipping or direct to Amazon warehouse. I thought that was the same. Uh, what is the difference? Um, DDP, so to make it like super um, like user friendly, let's go to the, the, the whiteboard real quick. So I'll break down shipping. Again, in my course, we break all of this stuff down. Um, and for our clients, we do this. But I'll break it down. There's a few different ways that you can do uh, logistics. You have XW, you have FOB, and you have DDP, right? There's some freaky ones, but these are the big, like, these are the three biggest ones, right? And the way it works is, and this is in chronological order also, guys. Um, chronological order from how much it costs, I should say. So let me do this so you guys can visually see this. Are we big on YouTube? All right, cool. Yeah, you guys can see this. So EXW is the cheapest. FOB is the second cheapest. DDP is the most expensive. So you may want to write this down or screenshot this or whatever you want to do. By the way, we have a ton of people in here. If all the new people can hear me and see me, I need you to smash that like button just so we can keep going. I want to make sure that you can hear me. Everything's good. Um, but this is the way it works in terms of price. Now, EXW, without breaking it down and all of this stuff, EXW very simply means your manufacturer only makes the product and you are responsible, right? You're responsible. So you're responsible for everything, getting your product picked up from your manufacturer, getting it on the boat or plane, getting it to customs, through customs, and to Amazon. That sounds like a bunch of stuff, but again, this is done through your computer only during your spare time, and it's a lot of steps. I usually only re recommend EXW when you're doing large orders, large shipments, and you become familiar with the business. FOB, number two, which is the option that I usually recommend, FOB or DDP, let me put it so you guys can remember. These are the two that I recommend for beginners, right? And there's a few reasons, and I'll explain. FOB stands for freight on board. So FOB is your supplier makes your product, and then they get it shipped. Like they take it to the actual dock and put it on the boat or to the actual plane, get it on the plane, fill out all the paperwork, and it's on the way to the U.S., right? And then from there, it goes to Amazon. So they take it. take it to boat slash plane and they handle all that, right? And again, I don't have much time, much space to write this stuff down. So hopefully you guys understand what's going on. Uh, DDP is direct, direct duty port. There's tons of different like uh, meanings for the acronym, but basically what DDP means is they're responsible for everything. Supplier, responsible for everything. And this is the reason why this is the most expensive. So they're responsible. They'll make your product. They will take it to the boat or the plane. They will get it on there. They will clear it through customs, pay all the duties, um, pay all the taxations, uh, file all the paperwork, give you pretty much insurance for your um, supply or your um, inventory until it's arrived at Amazon. They will make sure it's insured and gets it. they get it to Amazon. So there's more touch points for your supplier on DDP and it costs you the most amount of money. When you're starting out, I highly suggest that you ask for the price between FOB and DDP. So you'll see the difference. If you're starting out and you're doing a small test order, like in the AMZ formula, part of my secret sauce is the micro launch strategy where we order a specific, a strategical amount of inventory. That way, if the product is not crushing it, we can... Like we can expedite exiting that product at a profit and not a loss or at least a break even. Ordering way too much product, having way too much money sitting, losing money in extended storage fees, not being able to sell the product, and then just having all of our capital tied up. That's the traditional way of launching. And there's pros and cons to both. Again, channel, and I go into depth inside of the course for this stuff, right? But I highly suggest that you do FOB and DDP. See the price difference. If it's night and day and you can't do it, do FOB. Um, for your first order, usually DDP, um, and I'll put first here, usually DDP is what I like to do for my first order. And even knowing this entire process, I still do DDP. Why? It costs a little bit more money, but I have no liability. 
The supplier has all of the liability until it gets checked into Amazon, and I'm testing on that first order. As soon as I have proof of concept, because remember, we validate before we spend money and launch, and then we verify through the micro launch. And after the verification um, and the validation checkouts, then we scale. The first step of scaling is ordering more product. On that second run, when I order more product, what I will do is go through FOB, which will get me some cost savings. But you don't see the co you don't see the significant difference in between these three until you scale. If I'm running a container that's 5,000 kilograms, right, and I'm filling this thing up with 50,000 units, I'm not doing DDP. There's no way it would it would be like it, it would be astronomically more money. Um, I would do EXW, and now what I'm going to do is have a freight forwarder handle everything for me. Luckily for our clients in Inner Circle and our clients in um, Max and our clients in DFY, we have a sourcing agent overseas in China that works for us that you guys can get access to so you don't have to deal with all this stuff. But when I started, I didn't have those resources. And I did do this stuff and I did lose money because are there unethical sourcing agents that like charge you extra money because they know you don't know what you're doing? Absolutely. Like, is there like, are there logistic companies that are going to tell you, hey, do you need to order right now? Can you wait three weeks because you'll save $4,000? Yes, they're not going to tell you that because they don't care because they want your money. Um, and if you don't know what's going on and you don't understand that logistics is um, logistics fluctuates because it's commodity based. Why is it commodity based? Because you have oil, you have fuel, you have there's tons of commodity based decisions that go into affecting the cost of logistics. Like right now in fourth quarter, it's going to cost more for shipping than it will in second quarter. Why? Because gas is higher, fuel is higher. Um, 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 demand is up higher. There's just all of these different variables that go into it. So knowing how to do this, knowing when to do this, how to time it, and making sure that you can cross your T's and dot your I's that you're not paying too much is essential. It can actually be detrimental to the business. So amazing question. Uh, I'll leave this up for one second so you guys can screenshot it. I, are we on Instagram or TikTok? Wherever we are, we're to YouTube so you can see my whiteboard and you can see everything that's on. So we can kick it. And if you're not subscribed, guys, I don't know what else I can do because I give you guys everything on this channel. I hold nothing. Back. I don't really sell anything. Like unless you guys ask about programs and I still don't sell anything. I just tell you what they are. Um, my goal is to help you guys crush it. That's what I do on this channel. I love this channel. I love everybody that rocks with the channel. So at least subscribe, click the notification bell. It costs you nothing. Um, and it can be a game changer for you, right? Um, a recording for the live Zoom for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Um. Do we have a recording for that? It was recorded. Okay, cool. So what I'll do because a ton of people ask for that. Uh, we'll probably. I wasn't going to because. Like when people know there's going to be recordings, they don't show up and they don't pay attention. And I wasn't going to send it out, but we've gotten a few requests. So check your email within the next few days um, and you'll get a replay. We'll get it edited nicely and then we'll shoot it out. So there will be a replay for those who bought a copy of the book and um, um, attended that, that class. And for those of you guys who haven't got a copy of my book yet, dude, it's how many pages is it? 180? 180 pages of flame. It's not one of these little like PDF sales books that's full of fluff and trying to sell you something. Like it's literally my journey from zero to eight figures with Amazon and my entire philosophy when it comes to finding, sourcing, launching, scaling products in this business, right? Um, there's tons of stuff that I haven't taught about or talked about publicly, and it's like 20 bucks. So go to www1 the number one productawaybook.com. Um, and if you do so, you're going to get a ton of free stuff, including the masterclass recording, which was like two hours that Kirby was just talking about. So if we're going to send it out, um, everybody who buys the book will also get that recording, which that recording tickets were sold to that, to that masterclass for two ninety seven. So it's a $300 masterclass and it was fuego, right? It was fire, right? E? Uh, where are we at? Uh, why do you look for products with less than a hundred reviews? I'm doing product research and have a hard time understanding the strategy behind finding a good product. Yeah. So let, let's go back to the, to the whiteboard. So first and foremost, it sounds like if you know the hundred reviews, whether you watch the channel or you're in my program, um, any of the strategies that I talk about on the channel or inside of the course is not like 
it's not like the law where it's like, you know, if you go into a grocery store and you steal a bag of chips and you're caught, you're going to jail. It's not like that type of law. It's based off of my experience and what works. So like the thing, um, the thing with the program and the course and my like formula and what I teach is you have to play around with it. You can move stuff around. It's not cookie cutter. It has to work. But when I'm talking about a um, hundred reviews, so when you're looking at competition, right? A lot of you guys hear me talk about, maybe other people talk about high demand, low competition. So we want high demand. We want high demand. E, how do I take this stuff down the X? We want high demand and then we want low competition. We want high demand and we want low competition. So what does this mean? High demand means we can make money. That means people are buying it. That means customers are buying this product and we have depth of market, which means people want these products, right? People are buying them, which translate, translates to us getting money. Low competition means there are less sellers. One of the metrics to gauging low competition or less sellers is with reviews. With reviews. So if we have, we're finding a product and the average, again, this is based off of averages. How do we find the average? If the lowest is 100 and the highest is 300, the average would be 200. Okay, this is how you identify the average for those of you that don't know how to do this. Okay, so if the average reviews on product one, product one are, okay, um, product one, and product two, the average reviews are 500, the average units per, um, per month, units per month are 1,000, which product is a better product? Are we on the big board? Product two, talk to me guys. What's a better product? If product one has 5,000 reviews and product two has an average of 500 reviews and they're both selling on average 1,000 units per month, okay? 1,000 divided by 30. It's like what, 30, 33 units a day? 33 units per day. Right, so this is an average of 33 units per, 33 units per day. Now, one has average sellers with 5,000 reviews. Product two has average sellers with 500 reviews. I don't know why I put a freaking comma here. Um, what's better? Product two, right? Why is product two? Is product two has considerably less amount of or or the sellers who are crushing it have been on Amazon less. So keyword is less, right? Let's move this over for a minute. Sellers or less time. Less sellers or less time. This is one of the main metrics. Again, there's no right or wrong, no rhyme or reason, no factual theory. This is just from my experience, right? This is one of the ways that we identify whatever you want to call it. I hate competition and saturation. Products on Amazon sell, therefore they're not saturated. And there is no competition when you know how to escape the competition in words of co-founder of PayPal, Peter Thiel. So the way I started and my mentors and my philosophy is there's no competition and there's no saturation. So if there's no competition and there's no saturation, all products I find are good. Are they good enough? That is my philosophy. And that is why I can tell you, I can stand up here and tell you, not because I'm this Amazon guru formula or because I've made $11 million doing 
you go find, I can sell. The problem is any product you sell, is it going to be profitable? Can I sell it legally? Those are the main questions. Can I profit what I want to profit? Can I sell it? You can find a product that's crushing it. If it has Mickey Mouse on it, you can't sell it. Another product that we went over was Blender Bottle. What did I say they were doing a year? Blender Bottle? Okay. Blender Bottle's doing, you got to pay me that, that Blender Bottle. Blender Bottle's doing $10 million per year on average. Eight figures. Can you sell a Blender Bottle? Well, I could think of ways that I can improve it. I could think of ways. They are dominating the marketplace, right? Any of you guys, gym freaks, you guys know what this thing is right here. This is patented. They have six patents that are already approved, right? It's a trademarked and registered brand. They are crushing it. They're doing $10 million a year just on Amazon. They're doing $50 million a year as a company. They've done over a billion dollars in revenue. So can you sell it legally? Can I go sell a blender bottle legally? No. Can you sell a generic knockoff and make money? Yes. Is it long? Is there longevity? Is it sustainable? So. Um, when you're looking at it, can you make enough money or can you actually sell it, right? I've had clients in the past who've went against what I recommended. For instance, you can't sell adult toys. You can't market adult toys on Amazon. I've had clients that went against what I've said. They made a stupid amount of money and then they got shut down and they no longer sell on Amazon. So it's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to be making money for a very long time? Do you want to make money quick? Um, like th the main two questions is, can I sell it and will it make enough? Any product you find, I can launch it. I can sell it because all products on Amazon sell. If products on Amazon don't sell, typically it is a person problem. It is a marketing problem. It is a listing problem. It is a PPC problem. It is an advertising problem. It is a developmental problem. It is a pricing problem. It is not a product problem. There's 250 million products on Amazon. And there's needs for all of them. There's pain points in the world for all of them. There's like all of these products sell. But the thing is, who wants to make $60 a month? Who wants to make $300 a month? I don't. I'm looking for products that generate three dollars to $10,000 profit per month. Therefore, I'm being very specific with the search criteria for the products. And then no one wants to lose money. So if I know how much I want to make, I know how to identify can I sell it legally? And how much do they sell? Okay, those two dominoes are knocked down. Okay, now the next big domino, the biggest of them all is how can like I not lose money, right? And let me, I'm a visual person. I'm the caveman that likes to draw pictures for everything. Um, so let's go back to the whiteboard and I'll break this down. So these are the dominoes, right? Domino number one. Domino number one is can I sell it, right? Can I sell it? What falls under can I sell it? What falls under can I sell it? Legal. IP. I, I wrote two, I wrote one twice. Um, IP. TOS. And I'm sure if I sit and think about it, I could find more, but these are three of the biggest ones. Legal, what is that? You can't sell Amazon. Number two, intellectual property. I can't go launch a blender bottle and slap SpongeBob on it. Why? Because blender bottle is trademarked. SpongeBob is um, um, licensed to blender bottle. They're both intellectual property to two different entities and I can't do so legally, right? So can I do it? Is it legal? You can sell a blender bottle, right? You can sell a bottle. You can't sell cocaine intellectual property. Am I putting Spider-Man on it? No, right? And TOS, what is TOS? TOS stands for terms of service within Amazon's terms of service. So domino number one that we need to knock down is, is it legal? Can I sell it? Number two, am I infringing on intellectual property? Number three, am I voiding or going against Amazon's terms of service? You don't have to be a guru to know this stuff. All of this, number one and two is common sense. Number three, if you don't know Amazon's TOS, Google Amazon's terms of service and look for terms of service that's against the product that you're selling, right? Terms of service, an example is adult toys, right? Or adult, whatever they call it, basically adult toys. Another thing is paraphernalia for drugs, bongs, right? Uh, water pipes, um, wrapping papers. Another term, uh, uh, void of terms of service 
is um, uh, like bullets, ammunition, like certain gun stuff. You can't do this stuff. So after you knock down domino number one, after you knock down domino number one, we move on to domino number two. And if this is making sense down below in the comments, say this makes sense. Domino number two. Domino number two. Is does it sell? So, what do you have to ask yourself? Number one, is it on Amazon? That is the ugliest M I've ever seen in my life. Number one, is it on Amazon? Chances are, if you're finding it, it's on Amazon. If it's not, do not like. Do not create a product for your first product. Don't be that guy. Unless, like, and again, I hate saying this because you might have that revolutionary one invention that changes the world, but chances are, right? If it's not on Amazon, don't be the person to sell the one product on Amazon because if there's no depth of market, now you have to create a product, invent a product, and then create demand. Don't be that guy. So number one, does it sell on Amazon? Nine times out of 10, the answer is yes. Number two, does it sell your desired amount? Desired, I'm just going to put money just so I don't have to write a bunch because I'm lazy. Does it sell your desired amount of profit? If you want to make three to $10,000 profit per month, how do you identify if it's selling enough to make you three to $10,000 profit per month? Very simple. Is it selling 10 units per day at $10 profit? If you don't know how to calculate profit margin on a product, I share this on the channel like 40 times. It's inside of my course. Uh, it's inside of my book. I break this stuff down step by step. You find out the cost of goods on Alibaba. You find out what people are selling it for. You find out the, the F, uh, FBA fee, which is fulfillment by Amazon fee. You do the math. It tells you your net. You multiply it by the anticipated daily sales or monthly sales. That gives you your net. If you want to make 3,000 bare minimum, and it's making you $400, do you launch it, yes or no? The answer is no. Number three, the big one that everybody overlooks, which should be a winner, can I afford? Can I afford it? So before I do product research, how money I actually have to spend, not how much I just tell people I have to spend. You know exactly how much money you have to spend what is within your tolerance, what is within your savings, what is within your credit, what is within your partner agreement, whatever it is that you're doing, you know exactly how much you have. So, okay, on my piece of paper, I'm writing my freedom formula. On the channel, I have a video called Freedom Formula. I advise you check this out because I talk about this not only on Amazon, but in your life. If you feel outside of Amazon for a second, you're not getting ahead, you're not saving money, you're not improving your credit, your finances aren't growing, you don't understand what a freedom formula is. You need to do an internal audit on your finances and understand your freedom formula. If you work for someone else and you dread it and you want to be self-employed and own your own time, work for yourself and do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, and live this entrepreneur lifestyle, you have to understand your freedom formula. If your freedom formula is $3,000 a month, that means you need to make $3,000 a month from your Amazon business to fire your boss you need to understand this. So when you're doing your product research, does it sell on Amazon, right? After you knock down Domino One, I found a product, it's legal, I'm not infringing intellectually, it's not voiding TOS, it's selling on Amazon, it's making me 3,300 a month because I did the math, this isn't a guess, and I know it's making the money, and I can afford to order the product and launch it. You knock down Domino number two. Domino number three, this framework that I teach inside of my programs and in my mentorship, it's the framework, it's a part of the formula. Like when you look at formula, the reason why this is a formula is because if you miss a piece of this, this crap doesn't work. Oftentimes people fail because they just like, they're slapping stuff at the wall and hoping it works. Like they're jumping over here and watching this guy's YouTube channel and they're jumping over here and then they're going against like what they should be doing and they're trying to figure stuff out I was like oh let me just see if this works it doesn't work like that it's a formula if you want to go make like a recipe 
and they say, the, this is the ingredients, this is how much ingredients, you're like, oh, well, this other guy said this much. And then I like this, so I'm going to put more. And you just start slapping all this stuff into this thing, it's going to taste like crap. You have to follow the framework. This is a framework that wasn't a philosophy. I've done this and got rich doing it. That's why I teach it. So the third step and the third domino that you need. Guys, this is the framework. This is the framework to a successful product, to a successful launch. The third domino that you need to knock down is, did it work? Did it work? What do you mean, did it work, John? The stuff to make sure that it's going to work. I'm not God. I'm not a magician. I can't read the future. This theory, this, excuse me, not much research, as much due diligence, and as much work before money comes out of your pocket to ensure that you don't lose money. The reason why the formula works so well, the reason why my model and my frameworks and my teaching work so well and our clients make so much freaking money is because we literally do as much humanly possible to make sure that we find the best product before we spend money. And once we spend money, because in step three, we're going to spend money. If it does not work, right? If it does not work, and when I say it does not work, it's because number two, the desired money. See, we can do our due diligence on the desired money that we want to make, but we can only guarantee the desired money that we get once it launches in reality, once it's in the marketplace. The marketplace changes all the time. You can know how to trade a stock. You can know what stock you're looking for. You can set up that stock trade and then go to make the trade and the market changes and you don't get a hard profit. Does that make sense down below? If that makes sense down below, say so that makes sense. So the only thing that's going to work, I hate the terminology failed product. I hate the terminology it didn't work because it has to work or it has to work. And if you're curious and not curious and you really truly want something, make this work. Don't gamble on this business. The reason why I became successful is not because I'm smarter than you. I'm poor. I just faced 15 years in prison. I had nothing. My wife was pregnant. We slept on the floor. I begged for food. I volunteered for vouchers to pay my rent. I had no choice. This had to work. The number one reason why people don't make money with any of my stuff or with this business is because to them, it doesn't have to work. It would be nice if it did work. What does that mean? I'm going to try this thing. It seems cool. I would like to be financially free. I would like to fire my boss. But if I get any resistance, if I lose any money, that job which stands for just above broke. I had no choice. It has to work or it has to work. Step number three, did it work? If it didn't work, which means I did the amount of profit that I wanted to make, watch this. This is the I rinse and repeat from three right back to one. So in number three, how do we identify if it works? Okay, when we launch it, you guys can see it. I'm just moving this so I don't have to bend over. Um, number one, did it sell? Is it growing? Is there potential? These are the three questions that you need to answer as fast as humanly possible when you are in the, la the launch phase. E, how does that look on the screen? Can you read that? Is it legible? So number, number two, is it growing? Number three, is there potential? These are the questions that you need to answer. Not, well, how can I optimize my ACOS percentage through this world-renowned, never-released hack for PPC? That's find the product, go through the process, get it up, and sell enough to get the desired profit. Or sell enough units. If you're selling the units but you're not profitable, that's a tweak. If you're not selling units and you're not profitable, that's a problem. So many people sell enough units but they don't profit and they get out. It's not a product problem. It's a PPC problem. It's a person problem. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the help or the experience to optimize your listing. That's what it is. You found a killer product. 
I can't tell you how many times a week we get an email. I'm selling 27 units a day, but I'm not making money. You're selling 20. Congratulations, you're crushing it. You're not making money. Well, what, what are you doing? Well, I got an auto campaign running at $150 a day. What are you doing? You don't do that. We get maintained, well managed boat, and I love boats. I go try to drive that thing, I'm crashing. It's flipping over, it's going underwater, something bad is going to happen. Why? Because I'm not experienced or I don't know the fundamentals on how to do what it is that I'm trying to do. The boat was good, the driver was not. Does that make sense? Down below, say that makes sense. So, did it sell enough? If it's selling enough, Good. We can always fix the profitability. If it's not selling enough, is it growing? Why is it not selling enough? Well, I, I did all this research. I found this awesome product. I developed it. It's crushing it, but I launched it. I'm not getting any sales. Are you running PPC? Well, no. How many reviews do you have? Well, I'm, I'm starting to get reviews. Well, how many do you have? None. Okay, you have no reviews, you're not doing PPC, you're not running influencers, you don't have a social media, you think you're just gonna find a product, slap it on Amazon, and ching, 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 like money's gonna fall out the sky? No, you have to follow the framework. You can have all the ingredients for a pizza, but if you don't make the pizza and put it in the oven, there is no pizza. You have ingredients. You can have the product, if you have the product and you're not, nobody will buy. Did it sell enough? If not, why? Now, if you're doing everything and it's not selling enough, number two, is it growing? Okay, can we get to eight units and then nine units? Let's say we need to get to 10 units. It's selling three units a day, but then you have a four to three. If it's growing, we can scale it. If you launch it and you're not selling enough, you can't sell enough. It's not growing. And last, potential. What is potential? What can I do to increase sales? What can I do to increase profitability? There's only two things that you need to focus with, sales and profitability. These are the only two things that you need to focus in when you're in stage three is sales and profitability. Sales, and let me change colors so this isn't a, a cluster. Um, sales is, are you selling enough? Okay. And profit is, um, is there potential? Sales, did you sell enough? If not, sell more. Profit, is, is there potential? Well, I'm selling 27 units a day, but my, my PPC is negative. Let's lower your ACOS. Let's increase your margin. Sense? The number one way to increase profitability and potential of your product is to lower your A costs on marketing and increase margin. How do you increase margin? By simply increasing the price. By simply decreasing your product developmental cost. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is a full-blown masterclass here. Let me chill out, man. I think we're losing people. This is too much value. Let's just sports. We're losing people. It's too much value. Don't worry, guys. We won't give you any more value. Cut this off. We lost four people. It's too much value. I'll keep that for the investors. Just kidding. Just kidding. For the, for the few people that did stay. Um, where are we at? Great book. Definitely awesome. That's dope. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Is it advisable for my first product to cost $18 to $20 before I even list it on Amazon? Or shall I just focus on the one ninety-nine to $2 products only? Um, it, uh, the, the cost of your product doesn't matter. It's what going right back to what we broke down in domino number two. Can you afford it and will it make you the desirable amount of money? You can afford it if it costs $2 or if it costs $10. And it can make you the, the desired amount of profit if it costs you $2 or it costs you $10. You need to identify what product has the best potential, which we talked about in phase number three. Does it have the best potential? So when I have products, let's say I'm looking at a $5 product and a $15 product, they both make the same amount of money. They both sell around the, around the same amount of units. A few things I'll look at is number one, which costs the cheapest to manufacture? That's huge for me because that's less upfront capital for the same reward on the back end. Number two, which can I, 
which can I grow? Like, it's very hard. This is a one trick pony. They're doing 1.3 a month. They have nothing else. Why? Because what the heck are you going to sell after you sell a, a, a garment steamer? What else are you going to sell? It's a one trick pony. It's a one song dance. Like, yeah, you're slapping 13 million a year, but you can't grow this. That's cool, by the way. I'm not down in these guys. They're crushing it. But when you're looking at two different products, if I'm looking at a product that's doing, you know, X amount and I have to pay more to manufacture it, and I find one that can make the same amount, but it costs less to manufacture, and it's a better catalog introductory product, which means I can launch more products after I launch this one, well, then number two is going to win. So you just need to identify which has the best potential. Um, in, in reference... Um, in reference to the DFY, I'm not sure who you talked about in reference to the Amazon investment. Like, and again, I don't want to go into this. My whole thing is just to serve you guys and help you guys. But for those of you guys who don't want to learn how to do this or don't want to do this with us, we offer a do it yourself, do it with you, and then done for you. For those of you who want to make an investment and have an, our team um, run this entire play for you, find the product, build out the product, develop the product, source the product, launch the product, um, manage the product, handle the advertising. Um, the best thing to do is to, um, um, I think there's a link. Do we have a link down below? It's, uh, yeah, if you can drop the link, it's AMZ together. I didn't know if we had the call, the, the call link down below. You can go to amztogether.com. There's going to be a short video. If you already watched that video, just schedule a call and just let them know that you're ready to do, uh, you're ready to start, um, a story, ready to make an investment. When they were talking about 10 months, maybe they were talking about, in reference to how long the, the current clients um, were in launching their business, I'm not sure what they're talking about. But typically, we're seeing, um, I would say, around four months for product development, product sourcing, and launching. As we go into first and second quarter, things fluctuate. Um, but I would chat with my team. And if somebody can drop the link down below so they can schedule a call, it'd be awesome. Drop a link for the book, please. It is, uh, it's pinned up top, www.oneproductawaybook.com. Yeah, so typically, again, I hate talking about the timelines because there's so many variables from you finding products to stuff going on in the economy and like there's just so many variables i'll just leave it at that but typically i would say like around four months to find a product develop a product launch a product do the marketing everything like that have we seen less yes have we seen more absolutely it varies from different people to different people uh different times of the year when you start there's tons of different variables um, but I can tell you this, it's legit, it has worked, it does work, and it will work. So if you're serious and you like this and you start and you don't give up, then success is inevitable. That's like the best answer I can give you. Uh, where's that at? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can scale a business to a million dollars in less than 12 months. I've done it before. Again, it all boils down to this framework. Again, guys, when I'm talking about products that are going to make you three to $10,000 profit per month, that's the sweet spot for what most, is, most people's risk tolerance and financial capability for investing in this business is. You can find a product that makes you $75,000 a month. They're out there. You can find a business, a product that's making you $350,000 profit like this one, selling $1.3 million a month. They are out there. It is what is your risk tolerance? What is your financial capability in reference to investing? Um, and what do you feel comfortable doing? And follow this framework. Um, I recommend that you guys screenshot this. You keep this. You implement this. And you use this because this is the framework. This is literally all you guys need to focus on. Can I sell the product? Does the product sell? Did it work? These are the three steps along the entire way that you need to focus on, the things that you need to, to understand and ask yourself throughout the entire process. Doesn't matter if you're looking for a product that makes $3,000 a month or if you're looking for a product that makes $300,000 per month. This framework works. Thank you for spending your New Year's Eve uh, educating me. 
Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, I care. I want you guys to win. This is why I do this. I do this for impact, not for income. Trust me, if I didn't enjoy doing this, I would be home playing Call of Duty right now. I've got a few bottles of Ace of Spades waiting, and I think it is double XP for one to two more days. So champagne and Call of Duty, I enjoy. So I enjoy this, obviously. That's why I'm here. Cool. You guys absolutely rock. Um, I think we wrapped everything out. Again, really quick, I'll end with this, guys. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please, please, please click the subscribe button right now. That's all I ask you. Um, uh, click the subscribe button next to it. Click the notification bell. Um, if you haven't grabbed a copy of my book, grab a copy of my book. You will thank me. If you hate it, you hate the cover, you hate my face, you hate the first word, I will refund you 100% and you can keep the book. Right? That's something I'll do for you. Um, the link is one the number one productawaybook.com. And for everybody who was asking about like making an investment with a store where we build the store for you, the autom uh, Amazon automation or my inner circle mentorship or my programs or courses, when you buy my book, you get a free strategy consultation with my team. So for those of you guys that were asking the difference about the packages, I'm not going to break all that down. If you're serious, um, take a leap of faith, grab my book, read the book. It's absolutely amazing. If not, I'll give you all your money back. And then there's a free link to schedule a call with my team. And you can ask them any question you have about the business. You can ask them questions about the different packages um, and so on and so forth, and they can help you. Awesome. Other than that, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Happy New Year's. Guys, don't make 2022 the same as 2021. I need you guys to understand that change happens by choice, never by chance. If you truly want 2022 to look different than 2021 and you do nothing, nothing will change, right? There's a lot of motivation trending on Instagram and on TikTok and on all of these social media pages. I'm here to tell you from experience that change happens by choice and never by chance. Change doesn't happen from making a toast at New Year's, from liking, saving, commenting, or um, sharing a post talking about changing and motivation and all this other crap. It comes from you making the initiative, from you taking the leap of faith, from you taking action. Um, emotion causes motion. I talk about this on the YouTube channel a lot. I've made the most amount of money. I've made the most amount of impact and I've made the most amount of change in my life when it was tied to an emotional decision. You have to become emotional about your change in the new year. You have to become emotional about where you are and where you want to be. You have to start realizing that if you don't do what you need to do, you won't get what you want or what you deserve. You have to understand that if what you've been doing is not getting you the results that you've been wanting, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you'll keep getting the results that you've been getting, which you're not happy with. You have to become fed up. And when you take action and you start something new, have a consequence tied to it. Make it work. Burn the ship. Make this a reality. Don't make this a gamble. Go all in. If you go all in, you don't give up, you go all the way up because there's only two ways that you that you can uh, there's only two ways that you can fail, not starting or giving up. Everybody starts, it's the giving up part where everybody gets stuck, right? So with that being said, guys, you're only one product away. The links are here. Um, if we can go to big screen on this one more time so you guys can screenshot this. If you're smart, you'll screenshot it because this is a lot of game. Um, and with that being said, guys, you're only one product away. Hopefully, I'll get to work with all of you guys in the New Year's. Um, if not, don't give up. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys next Friday on 30 Minutes with a Millionaire, which is really always over an hour. So maybe we should change it to an hour with a millionaire. I don't know. But peace. Happy New Year's.